In this video, we're going to cover the basics of iOS 16 grids. To instantiate a new grid at the most basic level, you specify it with the word grid. Next, let's add a grid row inside of the grid. We can add as many grid rows as we need. Each grid row represents a column. Let's add three rectangles inside of the grid row and see what happens. We will first create our for each, and then we will add a rectangle inside of the for each. Let's add another grid row, and this time only one rectangle. Now, let's add one more grid row with three rectangles just like we did before. The first item in each grid row is the first column, the second item in each grid row is the second column, and so on. So now that we understand how columns work, what if we wanted to have the middle rectangle move to the center column? We can use the dot grid cell unsized axis modifier. Let's see how that works. First, inside of the second grid row, we need to add a color and make it clear. Next, we add the dot grid cell unsized axis modifier to the color dot clear. And as you can see, our rectangle now moves over to the next column. Applying the dot grid cell unsized axis modifier to the color view ensures that the empty cell matches the default height and width of the occupied cells. What if instead we wanted to fill two columns? How would we make this happen? We would use the dot grid cell columns modifier. Let's go back to where our rectangle was in the first column. Since we want to expand it to two cells, we can add a two inside of the grid cells column modifier. Our rectangle has now filled up with two columns. When you add items into grid row, the grid row which contains the most cells determines how many columns the grid contains. In our case, we have three rectangles or three cells in our first grid row and three in our last grid row. So if we updated our grid cell columns to three, our grid would look like this. Remember, our grid gets the grid column with the most cells to set our grid. If we changed grid cell column to four, we would see our grid change. There are a few more modifiers we can use when working with grid. We can modify grid column with the dot grid column alignment modifier. Let's look and see how that works with another grid example. In this grid example, we have three grid rows with two columns of text. In the first grid row, we have gumbo and $18. In the second grid row, we have shrimp and grits and $24. And in the last grid row, we have cooking class and $200. In order to get the first column aligned to the right and the second column aligned to the left, we will add the dot grid column alignment inside of the first grid row. We will add it to both text views, then apply dot trailing to the first grid column alignment for food and dot leading to the second grid column alignment for $200. Note that you can apply grid column alignment to any grid row and it will change all of them. It doesn't have to be the first grid row. Earlier, we configured cells with the dot grid cell columns modifier. We have one more cell modifier we can use, which is the dot grid cell anchor. Let's look at another example using this modifier. Let's set up a grid. Let's add a grid row inside of grid. And inside of the grid row, we're gonna add an image of system name called square.fill. And then we're gonna add a color dot red with a frame modifier that has a height of 60 and a width of 60. Now let's add another grid row and then add another color dot red that has the same frame modifier with a height of 60 and a width of 60. Finally, below our color dot red, let's add another system image which contains square dot fill. Now that our grid is set up, the grid has a few parameters we can set to adjust our entire grid. These parameters are alignment, horizontal spacing, and vertical spacing. Currently, our grid alignment defaults to dot center, but let's change the alignment to dot leading. Next, let's add some padding to our grid by adding 10 pixels to both the horizontal and vertical spacing. Now, we can modify our SF symbols to be anywhere inside of the cell we choose by using the following modifiers. Let's update the first SF symbol with dot grid cell anchor, and inside of the modifier, add dot bottom leading. Let's modify the second SF symbol by adding the dot grid cell anchor and add dot top leading to the modifier. 
you will now see that both SF symbols are positioned differently inside of the cell. One in the bottom leading and the second in the top leading portion of the cell. You may have also noticed that neither of the SF symbols kept their grid cell alignment because we were able to override it using the dot grid cell anchor modifier. We just covered the basics of grids. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like or subscribe to the channel.